and you don't need to you know css or any of those things to do this you don't even need to write a single line of code i'm not kidding you this is i'm not joking i'm not hey what's up people in today's video uh part of our tutorials we'll be looking at how to build this beautiful interface using python so originally i'm an uh ux I'm a UX designer, so um, I like beautiful GUIs and interfaces. So when I came to Python, I kind of felt bad because most of the GUIs in Python are quite ugly and they look outdated um, compared to when you talk about, you know, uh, other languages like Flutter or React, React Native and the rest. So however, look at this beautiful interface we're building today. In fact, it's what you're going to learn from this video. You'll be able to build any interface of your choice and you are going to do this with almost zero coding, all right? You don't need to, you, you, in fact, you really don't know how, you don't need to know how to code in Python to do this. That's how simple this is. So shout out to the guys who have built this uh um there are two guys and i've actually provided the links to their repository on github all right so you can go and check it out if you load i've downloaded it and i'm going to do some modifications to it also to suit my own liking that's the beauty of open source software right As you can build so many different kinds of interfaces as you can see this is not this is not just an image this is there's an entry here where i can make entry of text I can impute text here, I can impute text here, and you can see this is a button. And in fact, if you can see down here, as I'm clicking on this button, a function is running behind, all right? So that's to show you that you can do a whole lot of things with this, all right? With your other knowledge in Python. So you can collect data from this place, process it, and, you know, give output or create something from there. You can even see this beautiful image with the rounded sides, all those areas are rounded. And you can see it says built with love by Anatotech here. And uh Anatotech, talking of Anatotech, if you are on Twitter or on Instagram, please follow me on Anatotech, A-N-A-T-U Tech. Right. To get started, you of course, if you are just getting into Python, you need to install Python, right? So whether it's on a Mac or on a Windows machine or any other one you use, you need to install uh Python first of all. That's the number one prerequisite then i've provided also a link to this guide here so it's on github from the original maker of uh, we call it kinta kinta designer all right so now kinta itself is a gui um, framework that already exists in python so what the builder of this kinta designer they've uh, been able to abstract on kinta so that you can be able to just create your design on figma you can see my figma here so you can create this design on figma here and then you can then share this design that you create through the software and then print out um it generates the code and all you have to do is to run it and see your gui and then do whatever you want to do with it from there okay so let's get into this proper so you the link to this is provided and you can see very beautifully they provided even translations to other languages so first of all you install python next is that you need to install uh kinta designer and then you have to have figma so just follow the instructions here so you can install this by using pip install you have another option of using poetry then the other option which i actually used but this seems to be a little bit more advanced you don't need to do this but if you're curious where you clone the repository to your system and then you run it from your system and that is how i'm actually running this so whichever works for you whichever is simplest for you uh you do it okay so the next thing you want to do is after you have installed the software um you just go over to your figma and you make some design right uh whatever you want to design it could be a mobile application interface you want to design or it could be for this is a desktop interface design so i created this to have the frame of this is um the width is 1332 pixels and the height is it's 855 pixels that's for the frame all right that i use for this design then inside of it i also went ahead and placed um 
I placed, or let me move over to this one. I, I created those two designs for the two different software. So um, I created this one here. So just use your rectangle tool to drag a rectangle, you know, create your design. I used, I created a linear gra gradient here on the image. Um, just make sure you order the images accordingly. You know, like this is the background of the page. So it's going to be at the down. So you can see is the last thing here and it's named image. All right. So please be careful what you name your files, your um, files here on your Figma because it matters a lot. Okay. So if you can see here, I named, this is my text area. All right. I named it this, right? Text area. Um, sorry. Yeah, this is where I am. So this is my text area. So I'm just going to take this so we don't focus on that. That's for the other design there. All right. So this is a text area here. All right. So I will actually advise you to try and see if you can read the documentation of uh, Kinta before you really dive into using this because this is just an abstraction of uh, Kinta and Python. So if you don't know the basics of Python, you don't know uh kinta is just like somebody trying to uh you know if you if you know react maybe you're trying to do react um before actually learning the basics of javascript you have a very hard time learning that so all right so the best thing is for you to just go on on google and just search for kinta python kinta docs and yeah you're going to see that's it here docs.python is actually on the official python website tk that's a short form for it all right so tk so you can read everything you need to learn know about it here about you know the different widgets we call them widgets so there are different widgets that uh, kinta operates with so it will help you understand how to work with this properly so um we're back here you can see i've named my frame all right and then i've put in this rectangle here and I've designed it. I've put a text here. This is just normal text. Just typed it. And there's another text, right? Um, that I typed here. So let me just rename this so you see that this is a text. So um, login page. All right. And I'm going to change this to first. Oh, let me say email address. And then I'll say password. And then I'll say repeat password. All right. Now I'll say here login. Okay. So uh, you can change this to anything you want. So now it has become like a login screen, right? Beautiful. Now the next thing we do is um, you can see I left this place, the background to be black. It's not a must. You can change this to any color you want. Say you want to change it to any color. There is no there's no rule to that but just know that when you run your software because this is the software running on my system now this is the app when you run it you can see i have this black beautiful black background if you care for black dark mode this helps all right so that's why i, I left mine at that so change it i'm just going to do ctrl z to undo that change all right so now what about the rounded rounded image because if you note kinta you will know that it doesn't have the feature for rounding of images. Of course, there's always a workaround to do it, but it's quite um, tedious and time consuming. So I just placed this image. I got this image courtesy of uh, pixels. All right. So now I just copied it and I pasted on my on here. So, you know, of course, if you know how to work with Figma, you know how you move around your images. So I'm going to undo that to take it back. So the image is inside the frame. Everything I'm doing here must be inside this frame. All right. If not, it won't appear. Now, another thing you need to notice is when you come over here to my frame area at the right hand, you notice that this X is set to zero. Y is set to zero. So these two things have to be set to zero. If not, when you produce your final work and you run it in Python, it might give you unexpected appearance. So please make sure this is this and make sure that your frame right your frame is the size you want it to be when you produce all right this frame here this frame so if you're using a 13 inch laptop you should check the 
resolution so you know how to set your height and your width and if you're using a desktop and that's where you want to run it if you're using a mobile phone let's say an iphone 13 you should know how to set your frame and all that so once you have that up the way you can set this you see this image you can change it you can set it to around this but the good thing you need to know is that when you set the em once you import an image all right anything that is a picture an image please name it as an image all right so I know you might be thinking, oh, why don't I name these things image one, image two, you know, normally as we do in Figma in order for you to differentiate your images. But if you do that, you might have unexpected results. So it's best for you to just do it according to what the developers have um, given us to work with. All right. So this is this is how it is here. If you come to the official um, documentation again for Kinta Designer, you will see it that is Figma element name and this is the Kinta element name, right? That's the Kinta elements that it's going to, uh, that the, the software is going to use to replace this Figma element. That's how it works. So if you name an element button in Figma, then Kinta is going to see it as a button. If it's a line you drew, then it's going to, you have to name it a line. If it's a text in your Figma, if it's a text, it has to be a text, or you don't need to name it text, you can name it anything. According to the official documentation, it says name it anything. If it's rectangle, it has to be rectangle if it's text area it has to be text area all right so text area and text box they are a bit different different so for text area is a place where um you can enter many lines of uh text all right it mustn't be one line of text you can enter multiple lines of text in it but for text box you have to enter as an entry so you enter just one line of code for instance if it's an image you have to also name it image so kinta can change it to canvas image all right so please take note of the naming if not you will have unexpected results so once you are done doing that now you might ask me okay how did i achieve um this outcome here all right and even the official owner of this uh, software mentioned it in their documentation and their videos all right so if you come here you see that something is happening here i have a text area inside of an image all right so i first of all placed my text areas there are three text areas all right so i place them all together one two three here but i arrange them according to how i want them to be arranged on my uh on here on my screen right now for this this is an this is a rectangle actually but i named it image because of what i want uh kinta and the Inter designer to see this rectangle as an image so when it sees it as an image instead of because normally so this is what happens if we don't do this if we go ahead and and you know create this interface this gui what is going to happen is that if this was just left as uh if i just did it to be a text area or a text box all right and i didn't put this one this image above it or beneath it under it and then made it bigger what is going to happen is that when you create your software you're going to see that instead of a rounded rounded um rectangle you're going to still have a normal rectangle so there'll be a white space printed beneath here so that's why i had to come up with this i said okay I'll, since if you make if you name a rectangle an image the software changes it to an image and it does not change the um radius the border radius it doesn't affect it doesn't change the border radius back to normal so i created this image here all right i created this rectangle and i named it image you can see here i also created for this named it image created for this and named it image then i now if you check let's let me show you if you change the color of this you will notice it all right that these are actually another rectangle on top of the one beneath so this one now i can name it text box or i can name it a text area whichever i wish to do all right so i'm, I'm going to do that so that from the user's interface the person is just going to see a round rectangle but will not see this one or it's you might see it but it will be faint you understand so it's going to still give us a, an appealing look so once i'm good with that the next thing I'll do is my button. All right. The same thing with my button. Here, I still um, created a smaller rectangle inside with the same color, then created a bigger one under it. 
all right this one under it's just like this one here is this one underneath look i'll name it an image all right name it an image while the one at the top i'll name it a i'll name it um a rectangle or i can name it a button whichever it is but i just put them together the button the login text and everything and i grouped everything together all right so once we are done um with everything so we are done with our design now so you have to go over to your browser and go to figma.com if you already logged in on your system you will it will take you to your figma account no doubt to take you to your figma account all right so it's loading mine up now just be patient a bit depending on your network okay so mine has finally opened up you can see a couple of designs i have here already and then you can see um this design i'm even working on is already here but then that's not why we are here the major thing you're here for is to come here click on this button go to settings then you scroll all the way down you're going to see this this place um personal access token so this is the personal access token you're going to use with the application all right but so in order for you to get the personal access token you have to enter a description there so after putting in the description and you click enter you will see um, the code will be generated it's a long code so you need to copy it and save it up somewhere probably open a create a text file and save it in text file or your gmail anywhere when you save it uh, because this you only have one chance to copy it when, after copying it and you close this page you won't be able to see it anymore when you come back to the page it's for security reasons i guess and as you can see you can revoke your access if you've given access to some apps previously you can revoke them next thing i have to do now is come back to uh my figma all right make sure you highlight this specific uh place right this one this one you want to export and then you click on share and when you click on share you copy the link now i've copied two things one is my access token second is my link right so once i copy that that means i'm good with figma for now right i'm all good with this now i come back to my browser uh to my bs code i, I prefer using bs code or whichever editor you're using but the, the the basics are almost the same thing i use a windows uh, machine so if you're using a mac uh, you may have to you know use pip3 where i use pip all right basically that's the major difference between the two interfaces all right so i'm back to my vs studio code here all right remember we, you have previously installed the software i don't know how you installed it but for me i used the method of cloning as i said before i cloned the uh repo i cloned the repository and then i i, I will run the code manually all right so how do i get to do that it's a moment so this is the folder where i cloned i cloned the repository to you can see let me just okay all right so this is my pinter this is my folder all right this is where i cloned the repo to okay so i've done all the necessary installations required for this I'm just going to kill whatever terminal is running so i've done all the necessary installations that are required here so um if you have done it also this should work properly for you so you can see here this is my uh, gui code that is inside the source code that i cloned right so what i have to do is i have to go into i'll do a uh, control with this to open terminal okay so you can see i'm here i'm not yet inside the um this kinta this the kinta uh, designer folder so i'm just going to right click do rename and then copy that all right to save us time so i'm going to come here i'll say cd so what I've done is I've gone into the folder that contains 
um, my Kinta designer. I'm going to go in once more. I'll say CD again, GUI. That's another folder, the folder that contains the main file. This file here, GUI.py, is what I'm going to run. So I'm going to say, um, I can do this, or I can I can just open this code here and run from my interface here. Okay. So any of that. So I can just say pi GUI dot py so once i do that you can see this this is the interface for the kinta designer all right so very beautiful smooth clean and it even has a link to the repo where you can go and read more about it here okay so all i have to do is remember i've copied my token id from figma so on windows if i click on windows button and i hold down v it's going to give me my clipboard so if not, that means you should have copied your token ID and pasted it somewhere. So just copy it and come back and paste it here. My token ID is, is pasted. And then I'm going to do that again so that I can get my file URL. So the file URL is the Figma file, all right? So I paste it and I'm going to click on output part where I want this build to be saved. So I'm going to go to my project um, to save it here to my main Python project uh, folder. So I'm going to do this. And all I have to do now is to click generate. Now just hold on and wait for a few seconds. It actually doesn't waste time. And um, you can see from my terminal here, if you see my terminal is saying it's creating some things, it's creating something. So that's based on how the program was designed. So it's giving kind of feedback on the terminal area about this. Of course, even if you close your terminal, it doesn't matter if you still run accordingly so it's still running and sometimes you can see not responding here all right so not responding it could show you that when it's running if you're familiar with python software some of this happen um on some software is when some heavy lifting is being done behind the scenes so let's just wait for this and drink some water while it works when it's done working it's going to give us a feedback so I'm not worried about it awesome so beautiful beautiful so as you can see now we have successfully it says project successfully generated at it showed me where it was the folder is so the folder it was it created this uh, building is named build all right so remember that if you try generating again and you have you go to the same main folder to as your target folder it might overwrite what you have although it will give you the notification before it overwrites so i'm just going to click ok i'm done with this so i'm going to bring that bring this down so all i have to do is i'm going to um make it make this easier for us so i'm just going to go to my file explorer i'll go to my pc and my desktop my desktop is actually where this python my python folder is i'm going to open it go to my project of course you can do all this through the command line uh, if you're familiar with the uh command line interface properly if not this also works nothing stops you from doing this so i'm just going to look for that folder you can see the folder here build so i'm going to double click to open it now you know if you're familiar with how to open vs studio code open a folder in vs studio code you know that i'm just going to click here at the address bar i'll do cmd as command i'll do this so you can open this any other way you want it works so um this is the folder now so I'm, I'm just going to do uh, P, PY. I, I, I wanted to open this in, in VS Studio Code earlier, but you can still do this, start Python, and then run the GUI. So uh, but let me just go ahead and do code dot, right? And I'll enter so that I can open this folder in my Visual Studio Code. So you can see this is actually what the software generated. If you come over here to your assets, you can see these are the assets. These are the assets. So these are the assets that we have, right? So while this is the software code that you have. So all you have to do is you can run this from here or any other way you know how to initiate running Python. So I'm just going to click on run. And once I do that, ladies and gentlemen, we have our interface. So I drag this from my other, so I'm using two monitors so i had to drag it opened on the other monitor so i had to drag it here so you can see now oh i'm so happy we have our beautiful interface that we started out with now ready and you can see
can type here uh, Mary. Now we can say subscribe to my channel, please. <laughs> and I can type, well, the reason why I said you should go learn about Kinta again, you can change this, of course, if you want to change the size of the text that appears here, you can do all those via the back uh, through your code, all right? So you can type any other thing here, your password, your password, and then you can see this even a button and as i'm clicking it something is running in the background showing you that we can actually perform operations with this you can do validations and all those things using this beautiful interface doesn't this look awesome tell me so if you really got value from this please don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit on that subscribe button um i have so many videos i have so many amazing python programs you know password generators how to convert uh you know something like this into a desktop a native desktop uh software how to convert from python to apk i have so many topics that i have to share with you and i'm so so excited i know the channel is new and all that but you can see we've started on a very nice foot so please hit the like button if you have any questions about what we've done here don't forget to drop the equation in the comment section and of course if you appreciate this also drop a comment in your in the comment section and please subscribe and turn on the notification that would be so so lovely and of course if you're on social media you can follow me at anato tech or anato green if you want to know more about my personal life so basically this is all this is all you can let me shift this to my second monitor now if we come to our code here you can do a whole lot of things you can if you study this now you see how beautiful this is how how concise python is now all of this interface was done in just less than 200 lines 200 lines of code all of this was done in less than 200 lines of code that's the beauty of python all right that's the beauty of python the beauty of python where i feel that's where it actually supersedes so many other programming languages the conciseness of it so when you come into your uh into your code you can explore this you know you can see uh, uh the code to go and get the github repository we've looked at before you can see the uh the libraries that were imported for this to be able to work with kinta and the rest and everything in fact you can make changes to this design even as they are let me show you how you can make changes to this design right now okay and then let me do the first thing i'm going to do is to show you now if you can see normally on this is a windows 11 system normally if i drag this here it should fill up the screen right that is not happening and if i place my cursor here i can't even make any changes to the screen all right so um i'm going to show you okay this video has been quite long it's about 38 minutes i can't do that right now but in the next video it's going to be a short one i'm going to show you everything you need to know about how to go ahead to customize this interface to the best as you wish so thank you for watching my name is anato green anato tech and see you on the next video and shout out to everybody who has made this possible salute and respect bye for now and see you again soon